All right, this lecture will be uh, an introduction to the endocrine system, and the endocrine system, as I wrote on the board, is a system of communication. Well, so is the nervous system. So we've talked about the nervous system before, so I thought it would be useful to kind of compare the endocrine system with the nervous system with respect to various attributes. So let's put the nervous system up here. And let's, let's just kind of compare the, the, the method of communication. Let's talk about the nature of the signal. With the, um, with the endocrine system, the signal is a hormone. It's a chemical signal. It's a chemical signal, but we call those chemicals hormones. And, these are, and they're secreted into the bloodstream. contrast, of course, the nervous system is an electrical signal. Although at the end, when that signal gets to the effector organ or gets to the next neuron involved, then that signal will become a, uh, a chemical we call a neurotransmitter. So it's an electrical signal, I'll say, followed by a or ending with, I should say, ending with a chemical signal. Let's do it that way. Ending with a chemical signal. We call the, those chemicals, of course, we call them neurotransmitters. How about how rapidly the signal is transmitted? Well, you know, with the hormones, they have to be secreted into the bloodstream, and then they're sent around the body by the bloodstream. Of course, that's fairly fast. Uh, so, you know, we'll say figure about a minute or so for the hormone to get into the bloodstream and about a, maybe a minute at the most to get all around the body. So we'll say one to two minutes. One to two minutes for the signal to get from the endocrine gland uh, to wherever its target organs are. Whereas the nervous system is very rapid, very rapid, just fractions of seconds. So it's very quick to get the uh, a uh, nerve nerve signal to uh, um, some organ. Very quick. How about how long the the signal lasts? So let's say um, how long. We'll just say it that way. How long the signal lasts? Well, now we're thinking about if the hormone is just trans, just an initial secretion of a hormone, how long will that hormone last? Well, again, there's no rule here. There's no magic amount. Uh, a good rough average would be 10 minutes. Whereas with the nervous system, the signal's given and it's off. Now, of course, in many cases with the, with the endocrine system, the hormone's going to be secreted and it's going to be continually secreted for a little while. But, but just any initial amount of hormone that's secreted probably lasts a, a good average of 10 minutes. Uh, again, with the nervous system, the signal is going to be transmitted probably for many, many, many seconds uh, for, at a time. But, but the point is that any one signal would just be you know, instantaneous, on, off, whatever. So it would be, um, we'll say, very short time. Um, and again, just fractions of a second. And what about the nature? Let's say the nature of the signal or the response to the signal. Let's do it that way. Let's say the response to the signal. Well, 
Well, on the average, on the average, um, hormones have an effect on metabolism. So we'll say uh, altered metabolism. That's a very common response. Um, hormones can also cause muscle contraction. Uh, secretion of, they can cause more secretion, secretion of another hormone. And I'll just say etc. So there's several different possibilities of, of what a hormone might do. Uh, what about the nervous system? Well, you know, it tends to be an on-off type signal. And uh, so, you know, the typical thing it'll do is say to a muscle, contract or don't contract, uh, or speed up the contraction or slow down the contraction. Let's write that down. Um, so it tends to be, I'm going to call it an on-off sort of signal, uh, on-off response. And what I mean by that then is that maybe muscle contracts, or relaxes, or gland secretes, or stops secreting. So it's, it's a different sort of a, uh, a response. All right, well, that's, that's just a good enough comparison for the moment on, on these two different systems of communication. And, and they complement each other, obviously. The nervous system can give this rapid signal uh, gets, gets to the, the target very quickly, doesn't last very long, although of course it, you can have the signal repeated many times, uh, and you get this immediate response of turning something on, turning something off, contracting, not contracting, speeding up, slowing down. Whereas the endocrine system, it's a chemical signal transmitted into the bloodstream, and you know that signal is going to last a little longer time. It doesn't, you don't get the effect immediately, you get the effect uh, maybe in a mi one to two minutes, but the effect is going to last for maybe 10 minutes. Uh, and you may be altering the metabolism of a cell, you may be causing a, some secretion of a gland, whatever. So different, different sorts of, of responses. All right, well, that's the idea of uh, just a simple comparison then between the endocrine system and the nervous system with respect to being methods of communica communication, systems of communication within the body. Let's actually now talk a little bit more about the endocrine system in terms of what, what it's doing. The endocrine system is composed, well, let's just say it's composed of endocrine glands. Now, here, here becomes a problem. We have a little bit of a problem. We'll say endocrine system, um, there are endocrine glands, and we think of an endocrine gland, gland as uh, something that secretes hormones. There is a little problem with giving that definition. The endocrine system is made of endocrine glands that secrete hormones because hormones are secreted by all kinds of different organs in the body, all kinds of different tissues. What, what, most of the time when we talk about the endocrine system, we're thinking of those glands whose primary function is to secrete hormones. But hormones are secreted by glands like the, or organs like the kidneys, uh, the, the stomach, the intestines, all kinds of glands, all kinds of organs secrete hormones. Generally, when we discuss the endocrine system, we will just concentrate on those glands whose main function is the secretion of hormones. Um, that's not quite accurate again because we'll talk about the pancreas, uh, which is a very important exocrine and a very important endocrine gland. But anyway, so endocrine glands, uh, we can actually say the endocrine system is made of endocrine glands uh, that secrete hormones into the bloodstream. The hormones secrete hormones into the blood, and these hormones, these hormones then act on some distant target tissue. distant target tissue. All right, well, we need to stop just for a moment and th think about 
so, some of the words here. First of all, the word hormone. The word hormone comes from a Greek word, hormono, which means to set in motion. And that that's a, seems like a good term, since in many cases the hormones will set some metabolic changes in motion. So that's a good term, hormone. Um, and it's secreted into the blood. Of course, it's not directly into the blood. It has to be secreted into the interstitial fluids, and then from there it gets into the bloodstream. But whatever, it gets secreted into the bloodstream, uh, and it acts not locally. That's what, when I said it acts on some distant target tissue. It doesn't act locally. There are some secretions which act locally. These are called prostaglandins, and they act right where they're secreted. But this is not the case for hormones. And the de definition, by the way, is an operational definition or a functional definition. We define a hormone by the way it acts. It's secreted in the, into the blood and acts it's at a distance, meaning the distance could be just you know, a few inches away, but it, or it could be quite a ways away for, in, in, with respect to the body. But it doesn't act locally. And then it acts on some target tissue. Why would only certain tissues that we, and we call them target tissues, why would we act on only certain tissues? Why are there target tissues, but they don't act on all tissues? Well, obviously, the answer is receptors. The target tissue has receptors for the hormones. So it has receptors for the hormones. So if there's no receptor, It, it, there's no response to the hormone. So, you, so the target tissue must have a receptor for that hormone. 